In this tutorial, we'll look at the basics of what C-sharp constants and read-only variables are, and how these two concepts differ. We'll build a basic example application to show the implementation of a constant and a read-only variable. Right, let's get started. Welcome to Gavin Long Digital. Okay, before we hurtle at the speed of light into writing code, please subscribe, and if you're already subscribed, please hit the bell icon to be notified of future content, which will be coming soon. What is a constant? A constant is a name used to represent a value in code. This sounds a lot like a definition for a variable, but the fundamental difference is that the value of a constant can only be set once at compile time. A constant must be initialized at the same time as it is declared. It allows the developer to give a particular value, i.e. a value that never changes, a meaningful name. What is the difference between constants and read-only variables? The fundamental difference is that a constant is set with a value at compile time, and a read-only variable is set with a value at runtime. You could say that a read-only variable is a runtime constant, and a constant is a compile time constant. This means that the value for a constant is established before the code is compiled. This value cannot be changed at runtime. The value for a read-only variable can be initialized at compile time, but the key difference when compared to a constant is that the read-only variable can be changed at runtime. The rule is that read-only variables can be declared and initialized on one line like a constant at compile time, but unlike a constant, its value can also be changed within the constructor of a class, which gets executed at runtime when an object is created from the class in which the read-only variable resides. A read-only variable cannot be a local variable, i.e. a variable declared in a method. A read-only variable must be a member variable of a class. A constant, however, can be declared locally in a method. Now we know from the c -sharp variable tutorial that a constructor of a class is called when an object is created from the class and is used to initialize member variables for the object. So the value for read-only variables will be set at this point. Say for example a private member variable is a read-only variable and is set within a constructor at runtime. You are not able to change the value for this variable once its value has been set in the constructor. This means for example, if there is code in a method of the class where the read-only variable has been declared that attempts to change the value of the read-only variable, this will flag a compile time error. The error message would state, a read-only variable cannot be assigned to except in a constructor or a variable initializer. The difference between a read-only variable and an ordinary variable is that data stored for an ordinary variable can be changed and manipulated as many times as is necessary. But a variable that is declared with the read-only keyword can only be set or changed once, and this must be done within the constructor of a class. This is why a read-only variable can be referred to as a runtime constant. So let's go into an example that will highlight the fundamental difference between a constant and a read-only variable, and will also show the appropriate use of a constant and a read-only variable. So Einstein proposed the theory of special relativity in 1905, which was based on an assumption that gives the speed of light, which is approximately 300,000 kilometers per second in a vacuum, a special status. Einstein postulated that light always travels at the same speed for every observer, regardless of the observer's speed. So the speed of light is a great candidate to be a named constant value in our example application. So let's briefly explain the function of our example application. Our application is going to calculate the approximate time it will take for information sent from the planet Mars to reach Earth. So it is accepted that electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum at the speed of light. Now we know that it is accepted that the speed of light never changes. So this is a great example of a value that can be represented in code as a named constant. Now let's look at our read-only variable for this application. The distance between Earth and Mars changes because these two planets are constantly orbiting around the Sun. For the purpose of our example application, we are mostly interested in the average distance between the Earth and Mars, and an approximate result of how long it takes for information to travel from Mars to Earth. But we also want the flexibility to be able to adapt our application to changing distances between the Earth and Mars, so that we can get an approximate value of how long information will take to reach Earth from Mars at different times of the year. 
So the distance between Earth and Mars can vary, but for the purposes of our application, we only want to set the value once for the life of the application each time it is run. So we are going to use the distance between Earth and Mars as our read-only variable. So let's create a class and name it Mars. Within this class, let's declare our read-only member variable and name it distance to Mars. This read-only variable is defined using the int keyword. Now I want to pause here for a second. You can see that I have made the first character of the read-only member variable named distance to Mars an uppercase character. We are using Pascal case for our naming convention for the public class variable, which means all distinct words that make up the name of a variable will have their first character in uppercase. I used camel case in the last code example provided in the data type conversion tutorial for the public member variable named feet, defined in the imperial class. Just to recap, the camel case naming convention means all distinct words in a variable name will have their first character in uppercase except the distinct word at the beginning of the variable name, which will have its first letter in lowercase. So I'm just pointing out my own inconsistency here to highlight a point about variable naming conventions for public variables or fields. I've seen developers use both camel case and pascal case to name public variables in a class or struct. So which is right and which is wrong? I would argue that neither is right or wrong, but consistency is important. So if, for example, you're working on a project with a team of other developers, it is good practice to establish the coding standards, which will include naming conventions regarding variables before any code is written. So I would argue that all developers working on a project should adhere to the agreed coding standards during the development life cycle of a project. The other point I'd like to make is that at this stage I'm using public variables or fields in some of my examples, but in the real world I would mostly use properties to indirectly expose private member variables to code that exists outside the class in which the field resides. We have not discussed properties yet in this course, but properties will be properly explored in an upcoming tutorial. A property provides a flexible way to read and write the value of a private field. The property itself can be exposed publicly but it can house a private member variable, so the member variable is never directly accessed from outside the class in which it resides. So let's carry on with our example. So let's create the constructor which must be given the same name as the class, Mars. Now in this constructor, I want to write code that sets the read-only variable from a configuration file. So let's add a config file to our application and we'll name it app.config. This file is an XML file that will, in this case, be used to configure a value that will be retrieved in the constructor of objects created from our custom type Mars. So let's add our value to the config file. So we need to add a child XML element named apt settings to the configuration XML parent element in the app.config XML file. Within the app settings element, we can add a child XML element that will contain our read-only value representing the distance between Mars and Earth. This XML element must be named add. Within the add XML element, we are going to establish a key value pair by inserting two XML attributes into the add element. First, we'll insert the key attribute. So we need to type key equals distance to Mars. Our unique key in our configuration settings file will be named distance to Mars. We then insert the attribute called value into the add XML element. So we type value equals and this value will represent the average distance between Mars and Earth, which is about 225 million kilometers. So now that we have completed our configuration file for this application, we need to be able to read this value at runtime. So we want to use the Configuration Manager class for this purpose. Okay, so the C-Sharp compiler is saying that this class does not exist in this context. Let's first include the using system.configuration directive at the top of our code under the using system directive and see if this corrects our issue. Okay, we still have an issue. So we are missing the appropriate assembly that contains the configuration manager class. But we are able to use the manage NuGet package facility in Visual Studio to download and install the appropriate NuGet package, which will include the assembly we need. So all we need to do is right click the dependency node in our solution explorer window and click the manage NuGet package context menu item. We then see our NuGet package manager window, which is a facility where we can search for NuGet packages. We wish to search for the configuration manager, so let's make sure that we are in the browse tab of the NuGet package manager window. Then in the search text box, we can type configuration manager. And this is the one we want, so we'll install this. 
Now we have our config file established and the appropriate dependency installed, which will allow us to use a class, Configuration Manager, to read our configured value into our read-only distance to Mars variable. So let's write the code to retrieve the value from the distance to Mars configuration setting from the app.config file. Okay, so you can see that we are using the key distance to Mars to read the configured value into our read-only variable, which is also named distance to Mars. Great, so the next step is to write a method that will perform a simple calculation, which is simply the speed of light divided into the distance in kilometers between Earth and Mars. So firstly, we need to include our named constant, which will represent the speed of light. And we'll call this constant speed of light. We'll define it as an N32 type and assign its value to the speed of light, which is approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. Okay, so let's write a method and call it get info travel time. The code in this method will calculate the approximate information travel time from Mars to Earth. This calculation is the distance to Mars divided by the speed of light. So let's write the code to implement this class and output the result of the calculation to the console screen. Let's run the code. So when we use the approximate average distance between the Earth and Mars in our calculation, the approximate information travel time between Mars and Earth at this distance is 750 seconds. Five principles are represented by the acronym SOLID in Object Orientated Programming. The details of this are beyond the scope of this tutorial, but the first letter stands for Single Responsibility Principle, which we are violating in our Mars class. The single responsibility principle basically says that a class implementation should carry only one responsibility. So the speed of light is obviously not unique to Mars. So let's establish a new class called constants, which can house our named constant speed of light. The constants class allows for the extension of the constants class in the future. If, for example, we wanted to include other constant values like the gravitational constant for Earth and the gravitational constant for Mars, we can extend the constants class by simply adding these new named constants. You can see that the keyword static is not being included when declaring the constant, but it is being accessed as though it were a static variable. Notice that this constant value can be accessed by simply typing constants.speedoflight. The static keyword is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but basically a static keyword means a public static field can be accessed without an object being created from the class in which it resides. A static variable is a member of the class and not the object that is derived from the class. OK, so you can see the fundamental difference between a read-only variable and a constant. The speed of light is not going to change, but the distance between Mars and Earth can vary between two points in time. For the purpose of the application, however, we want to configure the value for the distance between Earth and Mars. And we want the value in our read-only variable distance to Mars to be set once and then never change during a particular run of the application. We can, of course, change the distance to Mars read-only variable by altering the configuration file. So let's say we want to know the approximate travel time of information from Mars to Earth for when Earth and Mars are at the closest distance from one another. This value is about 54.6 million kilometers. So all we need to do is plug the value into our configuration file and run the code. We have discussed the significance of C-sharp constants and read-only variables as well as highlighted some of the rules associated with these two concepts. We discussed the differences between constants and read-only variables. Lastly, we developed a basic application demonstrating the appropriate use of a constant and a read-only variable. Please see the description below for details regarding any supplementary information associated with this tutorial. All code and related documentation can be downloaded from GitHub repositories. Details of where you can find these repositories are below in the description. Please hit the thumbs up icon if you feel you have gained value from viewing this tutorial, and please subscribe. If you are already subscribed, please hit the bell icon to be notified of future content which will be coming soon. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.